The Bar Star Podcast is a show full of stories, opinions, and sarcasm. Hosted by a working musician based in Louisville, Kentucky. Wait a second. This guy knows he's a drummer, right? Not an actual musician? Why would anybody want to... Never mind. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Star Podcast. I am your host, Stephen O'Reilly. I want to thank you guys for coming back once again to hang out with my dumbass. And this week I proved just how dumb I am. I'll get to that in a second. I appreciate the ratings and the reviews, and I appreciate your boredom. Because of your boredom, I have new numbers, and you guys are awesome. Jokes aside, I appreciate you guys coming back and hanging with me. It means a lot, and I hope you are enjoying the episodes that I have been bringing you. And speaking of hope, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody had a good week, and as the new always, I hope you guys are staying safe and shit. Before I get to my conversation with one Mr. Lance Eric, Jake Badger and I had a conversation. Hopefully most of you listen to that conversation, but that's not the conversation I'm talking about. This is a conversation we had on the phone, the telephone, where people actually talk. They don't just text and look for porn. And because of everything that is going on, and hopefully, 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 soon we can all start playing out again. Jake knows, and I agree, that a lot of you fuckers need to rehearse. So, for those of you that need some rehearsal time and are looking for some rehearsal space and want a cool place to do it, uh, for those of you that don't know, Jake owns Trio Production House. And... He told me to tell you that if you book a two-hour minimum at Trio Production House between the 21st of May, which is today, and the 29th of May, which is next Friday or Thursday, I don't know, look at your calendar, you got one in your pocket, a two-hour minimum is $25 an hour plus a $25 tech fee, but if you book Within the next week, he will give you a third hour for free. Free shit. And you guys know I like my free shit. So that's what's going on. Uh, Make sure you hit up Jake and book your rehearsal time. You guys know you need to rehearse. And hopefully, like I said, everything will be opening up soon. But just to reiterate or be redundant or just because I like talking. Actually, I really don't like talking. But whatever. Book a two-hour block, $25 an hour, plus $25 tech fee, which a tech fee, by the way, means somebody comes in there and helps you run sound and stays for the whole session, which is good. Jake will give you your third hour or a third hour for free. So make sure you hit him up. His number is 502-644-6705. Yes, that's his actual phone number. He told me to give it to you. Don't spam him and don't blow him up with dumb shit. Or you can go to Trio Production House Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Trio Production House 502. So there you go. Make sure you call Jake or text Jake or send a carrier pigeon or book through the Facebook Messenger app on the Trio Production House page and get your ass in there and get some rehearsing done. Now. Today on the show, I have a conversation with a one Mr. Lance Eric, who is the bass player for the band Bang Tango, and he's also the bass player for his band Color of Chaos, and about 47 other projects because he's busier than a one-armed paper hanger. Yes, I stole that from Conrad Thompson. About five of you will get that joke. Anyway... Lance is an awesome dude. He's an awesome bass player. I got the chance to hang out with him a few years ago when I was in Jefferson Tark Bus. We talk about all that stuff. But a few minutes ago, I said that today I prove I am dumb. And uh, I'm real dumb. I don't know why. I don't know where I got the idea. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't even begin to fathom it. 
But somehow, I have been under the impression for years since I've known Lance that he lives in Las Vegas. He does not. He lives in Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, I guess I can see it. Deserty, hotty, whatever. Fucking sand. They got a lot of sand and shit out there. I don't know. But I proceeded to talk to Lance about Las Vegas, and he proceeded to tell me, uh, I don't live there. So it's kind of funny. Threw myself under the bus, and you guys know I have no pride, and I do not give a shit, but I'm super dumb. Other than that, Lance and I have a great conversation about all kinds of stuff, all kinds of music stuff, how he got his start, how he got the gig for Bang Tango. He has been in Bang Tango for about 20 years. Uh, like I said, he's a cool dude. You are going to have a lot of fun with this. There are some audio issues. Uh, I have to I have to give you guys a disclaimer on that. Uh, it is not Lance's fault. It was my fault. I uh, I did not have my settings correct, so I cleaned it up as much as I could, but I really didn't want to call him back in Phoenix, not Vegas, and say, oh, hey, dude, I fucked everything up. Can, can we do that whole thing again? So, yeah, that's not going to happen, but it is listenable. It's great. You guys know I, I try really hard not to put out shitty content. And uh, I do not put out shitty quality. So it is not bad per se. It's just not necessarily up to my standards. All that out of the way. Here is my conversation with Lance Eric. But give you a little preview of his band Color of Chaos. And I'm going to start it off with a song called Hate. Gotta love that title. format i don't do fucking interviews and all that kind of happy horse shit we just have a conversation I don't know. Well, that's good, then. yeah so uh it, it's not one of those at all so i'm sitting here via or via depending on how you want to look at it skype with a one mr lance eric sucks that's only because that's what your title is on instagram and facebook it's funny i'm hanging out with lance eric what's up my brother how are you what's up man how's it going it is going well I figured where we will start is how and when did we meet? Besides through Dave Moody, I know that. Do you remember? Because my memory sucks. It, well, it was at one of the shows. Was, was it at a Tark, Tark Quest show? It was at one of those shows that I was out there. I used to go out there every year and uh, hang out for a couple weeks, and it was one of those shows. So how did you meet? How did you meet Dave? Or how do you uh, know Moody? Because I know you've known him for a that's, long time. That's a that's a blur. <laughs> uh, I, you know, with him, with him, it's so crazy. But um, he came to. We were on tour a um, long time ago. I think it was um, us, Bang Tango. You know, bang, uh, it was uh, Bang Tango, L.A. Guns, and um, I can't remember who else. But he was just at the show, and. Um, like we always do is we go out in the crowd after and hang out and do shots with everybody. And there's Dave right. passing out 150 shots. We were just getting <laughs> plastered in the crowd. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I mean, I know it's hard to picture with him, but, um, yeah, shocker, Dave drunk. No, 
or at least back then. But uh, well, yeah, it's not now. Just, but yeah, just uh, hit it off and hung out. And I used to go out there every year, like I said, and um, basically just do a vacation out there for for two weeks and hang out with him and uh, his wife uh, Mary and the dogs. Mm-hmm. Oh, and um, just follow them around, just kind of hang and chill, man. We just drank and just just had a blast, you know. I, there was a few times that uh, actually it was during Derby every every time. Gotcha. I, I kind of planned it around the Derby because that's. I seem of, to remember that now that you say that because I I know that there was a, quite a few Derby shows we did that you were there. I do remember that. That's what I tried to plan it around because it's 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 like the super. I mean, you know, it's like the Super Bowl out there. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and um, you know, and he would have you guys would have a lot of shows going on. He would even have a lot of acoustic shows going on. But that's the time I would uh, plan on going out there because it was it was a uh, fun filled. Yes, yes. Now, t- full disclaimer, and everybody on that listens to my show already knows that Dave is sober. He has talked about that because I had him on the show, obviously. Um, but yeah, back to, then we huh? used to uh, we used to obviously we drank a lot, and um, <laughs> I told him. I told him one time, uh, I go, man, because I would, I would go hang out with him, and then a lot of times I would, I would fly from his house and go out on tour, meet the, meet with the band somewhere, right. and we would start a tour, and I, w- I would tell him, I go, man, I gotta go out on tour to, to, to dry up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was crazy. It was um, a lot of, a lot of drinking. Yeah, he he used to, and he's talked openly about it, so it's not like I'm talking shit about him. But he he used to uh, put them away, and I I used to give him a hard time the day or two after a show when he would get really drunk because if he would fall, I would always tell him, "You motherfucker, you take so long to fall because you're so damn tall. Took <laughs> you forever to hit the floor. I'm just waiting for you to hit the floor so I can pick you up." Oh, it's not funny. Yeah, actually, it is. <laughs> there was one particular show. I'm, I'm, you played it. It was a it was a private party. It was actually the Derby, uh, the day of the Derby, because we were betting on it. And you guys were playing under this patio. I can't remember what it was, but it was a house. And Dave and I ended up spending the night there. Um, the rest mm. of the band, I'm pretty sure you 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 were there, and you and um. And you guys left, and Dave and I sp- spent the night because we got, you know, we weren't planning on driving that night. Right. But we, but we woke up, and my eyes, and I never, it's never happened before. My eyes were swollen shut. I couldn't see him, and I was reaching around, and I know Dave was there, and I go, I was hitting Dave. I couldn't see, and I go, Dave, I can't see, and I hear him just laughing, laughing his ass off, and I go, Dave, it's not funny. I can't see, my eyes. I was touching my eyes. And so I went in the bathroom. I put, he took me to the bathroom, and I um, I just got cold water on him. They finally I could see, but it was purely just alcohol. But it just I don't know where maybe it just couldn't go anywhere else. I guess it was coming out of my eyes. But <laughs> we were, we were glued, driving home. So drunk, you glued your eyes shut. <laughs> we were driving back to his house that afternoon, and we we're sitting there just going, "Man, we should just get some Gatorade." Can, we kind of both said at the same time, we go, let's just not drink today. And I go, that's cool, that's cool with me, dude. And and uh, we ended up driving by this liquor store. And I go, let me just see if they got my beer there. Because I drink this special beer and had it. And then he grabs a 30-pack. We jumped in the pool. That ended up being our drunkest day of the whole two weeks of that day. <laughs> we talked about not drinking at all. But that's how it went that, then. Oh God, that's pretty funny. So, so you and you and Dave bonded over alcohol, basically. Yeah, but then you became friends because you obviously still hang and, and talk to each other and all that kind of good shit. We, we are um, we're mutual um, Specter artists as well. So a lot of times we meet up at Nam. <laughs> that's at Nam. right. I forgot you're endorsed by Specter as well. That, that's yeah. right. So we would do uh, appearances. That was pretty drunk, crazy times too out there with him. Um, <laughs> and uh, Daniel, you know Daniel uh, Knight, mm, big, uh-huh. tall, big tall, big uh, tall, big tall uh, black guy with big long dreads. Uh, he's he's he's. I think he played with Billy. Is he out here? Or is he out with you? No, he's in L.A. He's in L.A. But he's from he's from there, or Minnesota. But I know Dave knows him because he played with them before. But oh, gotcha. I'm gotcha. I'm actually the shortest of the three of us, and I'm six four. 
so the three of us walking around Nam, you know, drinking a lot was 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 kind of a sight. But no, well, and fun. and I'm always shorter than all of my friends, so it's. I remember there was a few nights we were hanging out, and I'm I'm, I'm in between the two of you going, what the, I'm the fucking I'm the little bitty bitch sandwich. This sucks. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough about Dave. Let's get to you. So, you are a Spectre artist. You just told us that, and you uh, play bass. For those of you that don't know and don't read my show notes, because you're assholes. Um, when did you? And I'm not going to do the whole fucking interview bullshit. But when did you decide to play bass? And the only reason I'm asking that question, I don't mean hey, how old were you. I mean, was bass your first instrument when you decided? Because a lot of people the instrument they're on wasn't their first choice. That's why I asked that question. Uh, it, it wasn't my first um, choice, or it wasn't my first instrument. I I started out pretty young playing uh, piano and keyboards. Right. Um, once I got into um, high school, maybe even grade school, um, getting into, you know, uh, uh, girls and things like that. Right. Piano players not getting any. Uh, <laughs> yeah, piano was, players weren't getting the girls, right? <laughs> not, not at all. And and I was, I was. Wait, you mean you mean your big six foot four ass wasn't doing wasn't trying to pull a little Richard? Well, then in high school I was only six three or maybe six two, so I wasn't quite that. But I was still tall, oh, 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 very <laughs> skinny, very skinny, and uh, and the guitar looked ridiculous on me because of my because of my height and, and weight right. so um I, I th- you know and then in high school i was starting to get into a lot of rock bands and and um and my favorite was motley so i kind right. of got inf- i was like uh, that's what i want to do and i do remember that because you and i bonded over, no, no, over our love for motley huh yeah for sure I, I and there was no and there was no bass players around so right it was actually um the reason why i, I pursued it kind of born out of necessity yeah and now it's it's just i love it well it makes sense and and i have seen you play i have i have never at least to my memory i don't think i've ever played with you but i've seen you play and you you are damn sure a fucking badass and you know what you're doing um so around high school or so when did now i ask all my musician buddies that have ever come on the show and even the musicians i don't know when did you figure out holy shit i'm good at this and i can do this because there's always the i want to do this or i want to play or whatever the case may be but then we all have all of us that play i should say we all have that moment where we kind of realize oh fuck i can actually really do this do you remember that moment for you um, for sure. It was, uh, my first tour. Uh, we toured for six, my very first tour was six weeks, uh, going across the country. Nice. Um, Who were you with? In, um, I was with Bang Tango. I was playing with Bang Tango. Um, it was us and, uh, Faster Pussycat. Nice. Um, I believe that was it. But, um, yeah, we, you know, and then ever since then, since I've been in the band since then, we've we've toured the world with those guys. In the now, are are you, and I genuinely don't know the answer to this. Are you the original bass player for Bang Tango? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Um, I've been I wasn't in the band sure about that since two thousand four. Gotcha. Like 16, 16 years I've been with the band. Gotcha. Um, how, Joe, how old Joe's the only original. Um, I believe I'm forty five. Okay, so you're the same I haven't been asked that in a while. I'm 45. <laughs> That's right. My wife has to tell so, me at least. I always think about. Am I, am I supposed to lie on this one? No, I don't have to lie on this one. So. No, no I'm 45. You can, you can lie if you want. No, what, you and okay, you and I are the same age. Um, yeah, because I never knew if I knew you were obviously I've known since I've known you that you're the bass player for Bang Tango, but I wasn't sure how how long and if you were the original bass player because you and I have just never had a chance to talk about it. Uh, Joe's Joe the singer is the only original uh, member. Gotcha. Uh, in the band, uh, Timmy, our drummer, uh, he's been in the band about this about the same time as I uh, got in the band. Um, right. We've had a few guitar players since the duration I've been in the band, but we've done three albums. You know, since I've been with the band, um, they're they were starting. They, they wanted to do a uh, all original lineup this year. Uh, so they kind of 
they're doing their own thing like that right now. So gotcha. as far as our version of it, we're kind of on a hiatus. Um, gotcha. for this year, but I guess everybody at this point is on a hiatus. Yeah, I was I was getting ready to say we unfortunately, my brother, we're all on a hiatus. Yeah. Well, so you did you didn't realize that you could actually really do it until you went on that tour? I I knew I was okay. Um, I, you know, I basically I've been, you know, in in bar bands. Um, I've been with my uh, local band since I was 18 years old. I'm still in a band called Tara Shane. Um, we're an original band and we do we covers and stuff like that. But I, I, since I've been in eight, I've been in that band since I was 18. Damn, basically, that's crazy that's, to be in a band yeah. that fucking long. <laughs> yeah, me, me and my singer, man. That's that's how long it's been. And uh, you, you know, I mean, it was kind of just kind of getting the girls, you know, and not really <laughs> taking it too seriously, drinking a lot. Right. Um, I got married and, and all of that as well too. So uh, it really, I didn't really take it that seriously. And then when I was kind of just picked, you know, I met Joe and he's like, "Wow, you know, you got something." And then we went out on tour, and then you know, we went to Europe and all over there, and we were the crowds that I was playing to, and then the people that I were that I was meeting, right? Their their feedback on me, you know, and I was I was actually joining a band that. I, I grew up listening to, you know, I, right. Right. I mean, the story that I tell is I actually lost my virginity to the first album. And I, the reason why I remember <laughs> it is I remember the girl, she brought over the white cassette tape and she's, she, she put the thing on, she goes, Oh, it's this new band. And, and the first song was attack of life, which I didn't recognize at the time. I don't know who this is. And then the second song was someone like you. And I go, Oh, I remember, I know this. I've seen this band, you know? And, right. And, Four seconds later, she was leaving, but uh, <laughs> I, mean, I was 14 or whatever, but I was young, you know. But that's the true story, I was, actually. I was young, damn it. I was young. Yeah, I was young. <laughs> but actually, that's the true story. I did lose my virginity because that was my first, and um, that was the soundtrack in the background. You know, you fast forward years later, I'm in the van. You, you, dude, that's fucking awesome. I didn't know that, and you can't make that shit up. That's badass. I love stories like that. But I, you know, and I to finish what my what I, it's I, it was a band that I looked up to. Kyle right. Kyle is is an outstanding, amazing bass player, which is something I can't do and I can't replicate. And I I did my best to do what I you know to do those old songs justice that he wrote those 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 parts on. Right. And I wasn't getting any slack from anybody, any fans or any. Uh, any critics or anything like that, you know, they kind of just accepted me. So that was kind of part of it too, right. where, um, I, I guess I'm pretty, I'm doing this pretty well, you know, gotcha. and at, at, you know, at this point I'm very confident. I'm very confident up on stage. I'm, you know, I have my, um, a, a, lo a local original band that I'm, I'm, I'm part in, uh, color of chaos out here. Uh, we've been together for a few years doing albums and our album's going crazy right now. We're playing, you know, you know, before this year, we played a ton of shows. Right, doing, I've seen some of the footage of from that band. It's just a lot of fun, man. I mean, these guys we've we've all known each other in for twenty plus years, in in some sort of way. And, right, uh, just around here, and we just kind of you know with uh, our drummer. I mean, the band started with our drummer going through a real bad divorce, and uh, basically wrote this first song on the back of a suicide note and. Instead of instead of going through with that, you know, he called up the guitar player and said, "Why don't we write a song?" And then it just blossomed from there. And these nice. guys are just amazing, and it's just really fun going back to you know we're doing our own flyers, we're selling our own tickets. You know, it's kind of fun to do that because um, you know it, it's been a while. Yeah, do do it the old school way. That the the twenty something year old musicians nowadays will never fucking know what that's like. Not at all. They they <laughs> you know they look at us. They're going, oh, we can't just play. You know, you have to. Yeah, it's it's, it's a version of pay to play. Really, out here. You know, you, you the more tickets you sell, the better time slot you get. Is is for. And right. we do pretty well. I and mean, we we open up for tons and tons of nationals that come through. And you know, it's it's sold us a lot of merchandise and uh it's paid for our recordings and we're nice. doing well doing well man 
Now, what's what's the um, and this is I'm going to skip around um, because I I've never been there, but I've always wanted to go. What is the scene like in Vegas? I mean, the, before you answer that, uh, I hate to say that you have an advantage, but you kind of have an advantage because you're in a, in a couple of established bands, one being Bang Tango. But what's the scene like for a, a, just a general a schmuck like me if I were to go out there? Not that I'm going out there, but you you get what I'm saying. Is it? Is it a vibrant scene, or is it just kind of who you know? What's the scene in Vegas like? It's a, a lot of L.A. people are moving there. Um, oh, really? Absolutely, a lot of them, because it's a four. Hour, it's actually only like a four-hour drive to L.A. Right. It's way, 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 way cheaper, way nicer. Um, you, you, I mean, basically, for a little apartment in L.A., you can get a nice big house in Vegas. Right. Um, Weather's a little hotter. It's kind of like Arizona. But as far as the scene, there are so many bands out there. Um, I think it's more of a scene for um, cover bands. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of cover bands or tribute bands. Mm -hmm. Tribute bands are huge. uh, And they don't seem to be um, a limit. You know, I mean, there could be 50 Motley Crue tribute bands. Right. Doesn't matter. If you're good, you get a following. You can play at these clubs. Um, there are a select handful of clubs that play original nationals like Bang Tango and Faster and you know Ellie Guns and all those that would come through. Right. Um, Counts Vant, Danny's place, mm-hmm. really awesome. That's basically our home when we when we go to Vegas. We I don't remember the last time we played anywhere else it was Vant. They're just they're just so awesome. This, the the place is great. PA is great. People are great. But He's, um, I've always wanted to have a conversation with that dude. Danny's great. Yeah, he yeah, he seems just, like that guy that you just want to talk shows. to. Oh, he's really? Usually at our show, and nice. um, just a great dude, man. Just a normal. You wouldn't know what he, you know, he's really up to. Uh, well, and, and I think that's great. I think that's part of the reason why I've always wanted to have a conversation with him because I've watched enough counting cars and all that shit, and and I've listened to him on a couple podcasts. I think he was on Joe Rogan's podcast or something a couple of years ago, and he just he comes off as that dude. What you see with him is what you get, regardless whether he's on TV and he's got a massive fucking custom car shop and all that shit. He just seems like a normal dude. Yeah, big heart, big, just just a cool guy, man. Nice. Do anything for you. Yeah, I love Danny. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's good. It's good for covers, you know, and, and if you're working on something else and you're in a cover band, keep your chops up, I guess, you know, but I have noticed a lot of LA musicians are moving out there. Right. Now, do you live in Vegas or outside of Vegas or how close I to Vegas are you? In, I live in Phoenix, actually. You're in Arizona? Yeah. How the Born fuck did I, why the fuck did I think you were in Vegas? I wear a lot of bling, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should be in Vegas. It's the hair. It's a it's it's a very, it's a short drive. I'm like I'm I'm in I I love Vegas. It's my Disneyland. So I know a lot about it. I've been there a ton. Well then then uh and I will totally throw myself under the bus because I have no pride. Uh and I don't have a problem admitting when I'm wrong. I could have fucking sworn you were in Vegas. That's why I was asking you about Vegas. Now I feel dumb. I mean, I am kind of stupid, but whatever. It would, at least you didn't ask me about Portland. I don't know shit about Portland. <laughs> I, I mean, at least I knew something about Vegas. <laughs> well, I guess, you know what, though? If, if, if I was actually looking at you because I made you turn your camera off because you were too pretty, um, I probably would have seen the scrunch on your face when, why the fuck is he asking me about Vegas? Hey, man, you, you can ask me anything. I'll answer it. <laughs> So you're born and raised in Phoenix. All right. Well, fine. How far is Vegas from Phoenix since you said it's a short drive? Yeah, it's a short. It's a 45-minute flight or four-hour drive. That's no, that's it. not far at all. Oh, it's right down the road. It's not. It's, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm there a lot. I love the. I love it out there. It's just. It's a fun place. Gotcha. Well, it, do you do you feel um, – and there's a point where I'm going with this retarded question that I'm going to ask you again. It, is, do you think Phoenix has a good scene? Are you happy with it there? Um, I'm comfortable here. Um, gotcha. I've been everywhere. I mean, my whole family's here. Um, I've been everywhere, and as far as the weather, I mean, I just can't. This is this is where I like to be. I mean, it's it's hot a couple months, but you know, I can golf in shorts in February. You know, it's right. Just, 
I love the weather here. Um, the music scene is is decent. It's okay. Um, there's um, there's a lot of uh, unoriginal acts. For the most part, it's pretty supportive. I mean, I don't really take part in any of the stuff that's negative about you know competition and stuff like that. But right, you know. I, I don't really either, and that's not really the reason. I, there's a I'll tell you in a second why I'm asking you the question. But I, I'm not into the competition part either. I don't give a shit about I, that. I I laugh at it. You know, I've I've dealt with it, and I just kind of overlook it. You know, if you're if you're right. intimidated by somebody, then you have no confidence. You know, right? And it, there's a difference, obviously, between arrogance and, and confidence. Right, I, you know, sure. I just I I have no problem with anybody here, and there's a lot of people, uh, you know, when we first started Color of Chaos, which is only a handful of years ago, we didn't have any songs, and I mean we had maybe two songs, right? Maybe three, and Danny, our drummer, who's who basically is just the drive of us, he goes, "Hey, Scott Weiland's coming," and you know, uh, Scott Weiland's coming here. And this is a handful of years ago. Obviously, he was still alive, but. Right. Actually, it was just before he, he passed. It was the same tour. But um, he goes, he's playing at the Live Wire, which is a huge venue here. It's massive. It's, it's for uh, uh, you know local bands. It's it's a huge stage. It's probably the, one of the biggest stages you would want to, the nicest ones. So and he, he goes, I'm right. going to put in for it. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. Put in for it, and we got it. And we were like, don't you, don't you love it when that happens? We're never going to get this show. We'll put in for it anyway. Holy shit, we got the show. I know we were kind of fucked because when we knew we got it, we only had a, a, a couple of days to, to get a set together. And mm. so we learned a cover. We learned one cover, uh, Fortunate Son. And then we had, we scraped together about four originals. And luckily, they only wanted us for 20, 25 minutes. So we right. So it worked out. out. We played for a bunch of shows. We went over really well there. We were asked back to open up for a. You know, Steel Panther, which was sold out, twelve hundred people. Nice. Um, y and T, just the list goes on. You come to play there, and there was a lot of bands that were here going, "What the fuck? These guys have been together for nine minutes, and they're getting these shows." You know, so haters kinda, are gonna hate. <laughs> that's 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 kind of like all of we. I kind of did it myself, but we. Our, one of our slogans was "They hate us because they ain't us." You know, yep. it was on all of all of our guitar picks. Nice. And it was kind of a joke, you know. I kind of like doing that, you know, when there's a shit talking and. Well, there's a lot of truth in that. Everybody, uh, when I started dating Stacy twelve years ago, uh, she used to say that all the time. Don't hate me because you ain't me. <laughs> True. <laughs> same, same thing. It's. I, I think it's funny to. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Really rib people for their stupidity. Yeah. What do you what are you hating on? You've obviously made different choices, you being whoever is being the asshole. You've made different choices. That's on you. That's not on any of us. Don't get mad. I kind of absorb that type of negativity. I've I've done it in my whole life. Um I kind of just take it and run with it and kind of make fun of that person. Oh, I do too. And also just going it's trying kind of show I'm like I don't really care, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, just do what you're doing. We'll do what we're doing. I mean, I had a, you know, I got divorced. It was kind of a shitty divorce, and her, her, uh, her, and her friends were calling me a vile human at the time. It was one of their big names that they called me. So I had a guitar strap. It, I still wear it to this day. It says "vile human" on it. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, go, why, are you, why does your strap say "vile human"? I tell them the story. So. And then, like a nice. <clears throat> last year, I got a call from my agent, who's also Striper's agent. Right. Like, I don't even think I was supposed to tell this story, but I could give a fuck at this point. He uh, <laughs> he goes he goes hey, hey I brother, just got... nobody's playing live for a long time. We're okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, so he, goes, he says hey man, I just got an email from Michael Sweet, and he's saying that they're coming to play in Phoenix, and. He's banning you. He said he won't play the venue if your band opens up. He's talking about Color Chaos. Right. And I'm like, what? I, and I think it just stems back from, I think I was publicly making fun of one of his songs. And I'm actually pretty close friends with their former bass player, Tim, who lives out here. Um, I guess it was because of that. I, who, who really knows the truth? He's kind of a little bitch anyways. But 
So I was like, he goes, just don't tell anybody. And I go, well, whatever. So I go out and I make these guitar picks and they're black and yellow striped with our color of chaos logo. And on the back, it says banned by striper. With the yeah. logo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to use those yet. So but those are coming soon. I mean, they're, they're here. I just haven't played I, a show yet. I love you for that. <laughs> my that agent hasn't so seen those. Much. My agent hasn't seen those guitar picks. He's gonna probably shit if he sees them. But <laughs> what What's is wrong, wrong with you, you vile human? What is the matter with you? <laughs> Hated by God's band. <laughs> Fuck those guys, man. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what is your claim to fame? I'm hated by God's band. <laughs> hated by Striper. That's <laughs> sweet. Aww. That's that's pretty funny. So um, the reason I was asking about why I started to ask about Vegas, and I'm obviously calling myself out again. I'm fucking stupid and thought you live there and you live in Phoenix. Um, is before probably the maybe – I guess last summer I really started paying attention to um, kind of the scenes, so to speak, in different cities. Not because I'm thinking about moving. It has nothing to do with that. It was just I was watching Louisville. I've been here 13 years because you I don't know if you know this. I'm not from here. Um, the original band, uh, Heaven Hill, is the band that moved me up here. That's how I wound up here. And then when all that shit imploded, I met Dave and the rest is history. Um, and I've been doing covers ever since. Um but Louisville goes up and down. It'll go, it'll be up for a while. Everybody can play, everybody can make money, everybody can play shows and houses are packed, yada, yada, yada. And then it'll just start to go down and it just kind of seems, oh, man, nobody's booking, nobody's paying, nobody's going out. And then it'll go back up. But last summer, I kind of started thinking about it. And we've been on the downturn for two or three years now. Not that nobody's playing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're still playing. We're still gigging. Um, obviously not now with the Black Plague going on. But um, we're still playing and gigging and stuff. But I just noticed that it was just it was going down and down and down and down. And I started looking at other cities. And it seemed there was a few cities here and there that were, were kind of going down too. But I hadn't really talked to anybody that lives there. Uh, I talked to one guy in, um, I think, Chicago. I think that's where he is. Doesn't matter. And he said Chicago is kind of the same. It's it's starting to kind of slightly dip a little bit. But I've noticed that Louisville has been dipping for about three years, and it's not going back up. So that's why I was asking you where yeah, you okay. live, if you have noticed anything like that. I actually like lived in, in Chicago. You did live in Chicago? Um, I lived in Chicago for about a year. Gotcha. Um, like 2012 or 13, something like that. And – at least back then, that that uh, that city was pumping, man. It oh, really? Just, it was crazy. Um, it was crazy with music. I mean, music. Would, it was it was a lot of cover bands, like mostly cover bands or right. TV bands. And but every club, there was a club every ten feet, and it's packed until four a.m. Like they're open till four, and this mm. is during the week. Nice. You know, people would be hammered walking out of the club at 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like this chi chili cheese fries cart sitting there. And they get a bunch of that, go sleep for an hour and a half, and then go to work. You know, I watched it. I was like, this is crazy. These guys are partiers, man. And, and everywhere, you know, you can take a cab anywhere. and get Right. But uh, I, as far as now, I, I haven't been there in years, and I don't know. I don't know that. But at least then, it was right. crazy. That was one of the biggest music towns that i had ever been to but you know like i said as far as vegas it's it's a lot of la people moving there so they're, they're getting a lot of those uh, implanted in there and yeah I've, I've heard the same thing about nashville that a lot of people the vegas people that have been in, or excuse me the la people that have been in la forever are starting to move to nashville i know tons um, out, out to nashville yeah, and I think from what I've read and the few people that I've talked to, not because I don't—I mean, I don't fucking really know anybody, um, but the few people that I've talked to and the and the shit that I've read is the general consensus seems to be that LA is just overcrowded with the same fucking people, and the same forty-seven thousand people move out there every year, and the people that have been in LA forever are just kind of tired of it, and they're they're tired of the prices. Same reason people leave New York City, which. New York City is my favorite place on yeah, the planet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
So I, I guess yeah. I can see. I mean, it, it, it is. It is. what? Oh, the LA as, prices as as are ridiculous. The, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, it's not my favorite place to go and play. I mean, we play the whiskey every single time. And since the band is from there, it's, it's a good, usually we sell it out. So right. It's a great crowd there, but the crowd, there's so weird. There's a lot of, you know, girls up front. There's, and then, and then their boyfriends are in the, in the back with their arms crossed. Giving you, that, <laughs> giving you that, well, I could do that better look, you know? And I call that the impress me, bro stance. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's all there really is out there, you know? And, and, and their girlfriends are out in front and, and having a blast. And we never, right. we never sell any merchandise in LA. Like they don't, they won't buy shit. Huh. You know, so we don't even really put it out anymore. Um, but th- th- that's what it is. It's tiring to play there. It's right. It's, it's almost like you're supposed to, just because it's the nostalgia of of the, the strip. Right. And it's great. I mean, I, I'm I'm honored to play those the, the whiskey. I mean, uh, they treat us very well. Right. The staff is just amazing. The owners are, are amazing to us, and and the crowd's great. It's just you know. It's it's just different than anywhere everywhere else. It's right. I've thing. I've never been to LA. I, I finally made it to the to the Anaheim Nam um, in 2019, which you and I were there at the same time, and we could never hook up, which oh, was weird. Um, yeah, there's only, we, there's only a few. There's only like a hundred fifty thousand people there. Right, but we, you and I were messaging each other. I mean, I, I figured you would have walked your big six. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know where I was all over that place. I don't know what happened. You should have oh, the Hilton drink. That's where I was. I wound up at the Hilton. That's where I met Delana. That's how I got the Delana tour. Was I, I met her at the Hilton? Probably standing next to each other. Uh, we were fucking probably were. Um, but Anaheim <laughs> seemed, seemed really cool, um, and it had a and a decent had a decent vibe. But I've never been to L.A. Um, obviously, I've been to Nashville and all that other shit. And I saw some of the uh, the smaller cities when we I did the Delana tour and. I've never been to Texas or anything like that, but I guess my ultimate point with asking you this really random series of questions is because you're my age and you're out there and you're touring and and doing a lot of shows and plus you're in two or three different bands. Do you think in your opinion, do you feel that it's starting to obviously before the black plague hit, do you think that, live music is starting to wane a little bit or do you think it's just in certain areas of the country it's see loaded question (laughs) well uh, it's it's certain areas of the country that it's always been since i've been touring uh, there's certain towns that you know it's going to be a a great crowd um right then there's certain towns that i know we hit that i know it's not you know, and I always wonder, like, why are we playing there? Because it's going to be like, 50 people, you know. And, and, and then you think about it, you're like, well, those 50 people are wanting to see you, you know. So Right. But it's it's different areas uh, of the country. Like, East Coast is really pretty kick-ass. Um, Cal- any California day, you know, is, is awesome. Texas is great. I mean, I don't want to leave any towns out because there's a lot of really good ones. But, um there's just a couple of little areas that I find aren't, um, they're just, it's not their biggest thing. Right. And a lot of times it's, it's just, you know, maybe where they're on a Wednesday. You know, I mean, it's, and then a lot of the bands in our stature saturate those markets too. And, you know, and there's, right. Like, oh, well, am I going to see Bang Tango Wednesday or go see LA Guns Saturday? You know, kind of things right. like that. So it's just, it it goes up and down for me. But there's always those towns that you just know. You go know, to Jersey and, and, and New York and anywhere in Florida. You just know it's going to be pretty pretty kick-ass. Overseas is a whole different story. Overseas, uh, we didn't have any bad shows. It's just they love their music. They love their live shows. And they pack it. We play big like uh, big theaters to huge clubs out there. And, and you know, I, last time we were there, it was, we sold out nine out of 10 shows with, with Faster nice. Pussycat. Did you say with Faster Pussycat? Yeah, we were out, nice. we toured, uh, we toured a few times out in Europe with those guys. We went out and did a couple festivals in North Wales and stuff like that. 
Oh, very cool. I've always heard that Europe is, uh, most of Europe, their, their appreciation for, and they don't give a shit where you're from, uh, but their appreciation for music and live music is, is over the fucking top. Just ridiculous. Um, I heard D Snyder say he, he had a podcast for a little while and I read it in his book too, but he used to say that, um, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly how he said it, but somebody, some reporter or interview guy or some schmug 20 year old prick from Rolling Stone was giving him shit about being a washed up 80s band and he, why he doesn't play in, in America very much. And he says, why, why the fuck would I want to play here when I can barely sell 1500 tickets, but I can go over to Europe and I can headline in front of a hundred thousand people. Yep. That's why Wasp doesn't play here. You never heard of, you haven't heard of Wasp in 20 years. They still play, man. They play over in Europe to exactly the same thing. Tons. No shit. Fuck yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought they were done. No way, man. I've known Mike Duda. Mike Duda's been in the band for 20 years. Or maybe even more, you know, but um, he's a bass player. Yeah, they just play overseas. Damn. Come back home and they're good. But yeah, overseas is great. Anywhere. Anywhere, man. They accept it. They have big crowds. It's 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 this type of music it's in america it's the america's kind of like flavor of the month flavor of the decade whatever you want to call it uh, oh for sure i agree with that a hundred percent country's obviously huge you know stuff like that so new wave and they just kind of make fun of the stuff that that just because it's cool to make fun of 80s whatever whatever you want to make fun of 70s and stuff like that so they're just kind of afraid to go i think but they're Overseas, they don't care. They don't. They just they want to go see some live music. I mean, they're in the country over there too. Believe it or not, I mean, they're into everything. Just, they're just into live music. Well, and you can definitely tell that if you look. If anybody takes five minutes to look at any of the, especially the bigger festivals, look at the festival lineups and all the the bands that are on there. Those festivals would not fucking work over here. They just wouldn't. Couldn't even Be- pronounce some of the names of the, the bands on there. <laughs> well, okay, you got me there. There is that. <laughs> but I just meant the, the genres of, of how they mix everything together is, is fucking crazy. There was one tour, it was, um, or one festival, something like, uh, I'm going to fuck this up, so I won't. It's not these exact bands, but it was somebody like a Allman Brothers opening for ACDC. That's not what it was, but it was that kind of thing. Like you couldn't do a tour or a show like that in America because it, people it, it wouldn't go over. People wouldn't know what to do. Not that, not that crazy of a of a of a spread. But right. I mean, you still have you still have uh, some festivals that, that pop up around the country. I think Rock is probably the biggest one. We've done that one like six times. We did the first three years, and that's when it was generally '80s bands. Right. It was, it was a lot of people. I mean, I think it was 30,000 or something like that. Nice. Day. Isn't that the one that Eddie Trunk hosts? He hosts every one of them. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's out, he's, he's out at Rocklahoma now that I think about it. He was always out there. Um, That's yeah, funny. Um, he uh, hosts every one of them. That's good. good. <laughs> he's, on all the, he's on all the cruises we're on. I mean, he's just on it. He's, Eddie Trunk hosts everything. <laughs> You're um, right. You got me there. You win. <laughs> it's, it's always, there's always that little thing at the bottom. There's a poster on every poster, just and then it says "Host by E. Trump." Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but I mean, those 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 festivals are bringing in people, and those the cruises that Larry Moran are putting together. Um, we've done about five or six of those cruises, and they are sold out every single time. Nice. And, and they're not cheap. You know, and we those are a blast, man. You just it's just like one big floating festival. Yeah, so big... I mean, you can do those types of things, but they're those cruises are you know generally uh, '80s bands, and then they'll have a, another one that's like a like the one you were saying, like an Almond Brothers type, like a Southern Rock cruise, right? You know, those things, but well, and that's what I was getting at. I, th- I mean, you could we obviously still have festivals in America, but I just meant there most of the festivals from what I've seen. America based are are there's some parameters there and some room for bending, but they're mostly 
pretty genre specific in a lot of the festivals or the majority of the festivals. Again, I haven't been there. I just, I read a lot cause I'm a fucking dork. Um, but the, the majority of the festivals in Europe seem to be all over the map and they'll just, there's no genre specific anything on a, on some of the bigger festivals in Europe. Yeah. I mean, the, like a lot of the fans I was noticing at our shows were mm-hmm. into a lot of the 80s stuff. Like they were singing all the songs and right. they're wearing like, um, death metal t-shirts you know got you you know so they're into that and death metal and it's like that's kind of a spread you know if you think about a little bit yeah Um, a little bit i just think they're in the music man they're in the live stuff and oh for sure i've always wanted to go over there into it man. they definitely are into it and and they bring the energy i mean the places are every place that we play just been outstanding Awesome. When was the last time you were over there? Uh, we went about a year ago. Might even be a year and a half ago. Was the uh, <clears throat> that festival we did um, in North Wales? Nice. Um, it was like a, a bunch of bands. I think Michael Monroe headlined our night. It's just a, a, a ton, ton of bands. Just three days on this. It was a really cool. It was right on the water. And it was like a town they just built in the middle of nowhere. They had their own little grocery store we walked to from oh, our nice. from our trailers. And you can walk to the festival from where we were. It was all enclosed. It was pretty cool, but beautiful out there. People were people were awesome. It was it was definitely packed. Nice. Thanks for making me want to go to Europe even more. Appreciate that, fucker. <laughs> well, I say it. <laughs> hey, you don't know this really tall dude with pretty hair and nice bass. Yeah, he sent me. Some of them, <laughs> Some of them, Some of them probably, They probably actually will. I, w- I would not doubt that. So what's um, obviously with with the the Black Plague? Um, it's hard to say what's next. But what was your next kind of venture since um, you said Bang Tango is is going to go back to the original lineup? So you guys are on hiatus. I know you have. <laughs> color of chaos what else are you working on um yeah they're doing their they're just doing a handful of shows to doing a they're not going to tour or anything i mean those guys all have their own jobs back home and wherever they're from gotcha. um so we were just taking a lot of this on, on our end um color chaos we had a bunch of shows actually planned this year including rocklahoma we were on that um we had a bunch of shows locally here we were playing um kansas city so um, that was planned. Um, right now, we're just kind of hiding out. And um, I'm sure we're, gonna, we're just doing some writing on our own. All right. As soon as we get back together, we'll, we'll collaborate and do another, uh, do another record. Um, we had probably 10 songs already done anyway before this was for the second record. Oh, uh, very cool. I'm just staying busy. You just kind of plan... Um, Playing. We, we do, uh, my singer that I've been together with for almost 30 years now, uh, we kind of do a little acoustic live thing every every weekend just to have some fun in his kitchen. You know, we kind of just play a bunch of covers, but. Oh, nice. Really, you know, that's kind of all we can do at this point, you know? Yeah. I, I Yes, I do know. <laughs> Unfortunately. Just, just like you and everybody else, we're kind of just on, on standby. All right. Well, and that's why I was asking what what your plan was before the 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 uh, the shit all went down and 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 hit the fan. Basically, um, the rest of the year was going to be color chaos, just doing some shows and finishing gotcha. up the second record. Gotcha. Now, bef- before we um, get out of here, there there is uh, one question I have to ask you. Actually, there's a couple. Uh, one, um, what are you listening to? What catches your ear right now? <sighs> Oh, um, I love that response. Well, you, I'm, you have to think about it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually just just trying to think of what's on my. Um, I, I have a XM Series XM on my phone. Ah, I got you. What I listen to, um, I'm actually kind of obsessed obsessed with this Ava Max chick. Um, Ooh, Ava Max. Yeah, she's like this techno, kind of Lady Gaga ish. Um, uh, I kind of listen to her Pandora, and she's on there a lot. Right. Um, she's just a new new singer, you know. I, I like a lot of new stuff that's coming out. You know, 
I mean, I, I don't. I'm not just. I mean, I like I like country. I like a lot of things. Uh, Travis Tritch just came through here last year, late last year, and he's one of my favorites. Um, I like a lot of different music, so I'm kind of jumping around a lot. Like if you look at my my playlist, it's just it's from country to to hip hop to 80s to you know hard rock. It's pretty right. much everything at this point, you know. So um, so you're a, you're a typical musician like myself where you you go i'm assuming i'm putting words in your mouth um you you'll go through phases where you get on one artist majority and then you're you're still sprinkling all over the fucking map because nothing you're not stuck down one rabbit hole that a fair assessment (laughs) it's a mood mood thing for me i mean i'm in a it's a mood thing like you know what am i in the mood for today you know like right and that's basically what it is sometimes i'm in the mood for something heavy no, I, I think that's all of us. I just like to ask people that on my show because, it, for one, it's it's amusing to me to watch them go, oh, shit, what am I listening to? And it also gives other people and, and listeners of the show something else to check out. I've I've turned out, I've turned a lot of people on to bands they've never heard of, um, just from the stuff that I listen to, and then and other people that I've hung out with and on the show have have turned me on as well as my listeners on to new shit. Like you just said, what's her name again? Ava Max. Ava. So A V A Max, Ava Max. Okay, yeah. See, I'm, I'm going to go check that out. She actually sounds, she sounds really close to Lady Gaga, which I love too. Right. Um, so she's really close to that. It's kind of a, I don't want to say rip off because she's got her own stuff, but it's just good. It's just different. Catchy, catchy uh, lines and. Good no, lines. I, I, I dig that kind of stuff. I was watching the Prince tribute thing a couple of weeks ago i don't know if you watched it or not but there's an artist that was on there huh i have not seen that yet though yeah. i i liked it there was a lot of people ripping on it and I, I my opinion the true prince fans were not ripping on it the the fair weather prince fans were the ones that were ripping on it because i i love the whole thing i thought it was great but the reason i brought it up is because there was a chick on there named her it's h period e period r period all capital and i'd never heard of her before um and that chick is a badass amazing mm-hmm. singer she played uh she did a couple of songs and then uh sang with an, a couple of different bands but one song she played guitar and then another song she played piano she's a great great singer and I'm, she's on my list now to check out all her shit and it's i like finding new shit that i didn't think i would ever be into that yeah. that shit makes me happy you kind of feel like you've discovered them yeah, absolutely. I don't care how long they've been around. I just found them, so they're new to me. <laughs> I, I just I discovered Lizzie Hale about three years ago. <laughs> oh no, shit! Oh uh, God, she is that band is so fucking good, and she is a monster. I uh, this is a very um, cute story. I shouldn't say cute. Cute's the wrong word. Kind of funny. We went to Stacy and I went to um, uh, Rock on the Range. I don't remember how many years ago. Fuck, we had just started dating, so maybe 10 years ago, nine years ago. Uh, it was it takes place in Columbus, Ohio, for those of you that don't know. Lance, I'm assuming you know. Um, and we were walking around, and I had gotten hooked up through a friend of mine, so we had VIP, so we could see everything. We were up in the box. I felt like a king shit. It was pretty funny. Um, but on the side stage, on the Jaeger stage, which, again, for the listeners, the, the Jaeger stage is usually the – it's a tractor-trailer trailer or the – trailer of a semi and it opens up into a stage it's actually pretty cool how they designed it but that was one of what they were considering the small stage or the c stage because there was three stages and we walked over there because i was looking on the screen and i saw their drummer kind of going nuts and uh he he reminded me of me all flashy and all that kind of shit and we walked over to that stage and it was hailstorm and they were just i mean it was one o'clock in the afternoon and not that that's a horrible time slot but as far as the structure of how the music business works they were just getting their start and we watched their whole set and we were blown away that that band is amazing but lizzie's voice is is fucking out of this world and we've I think we've probably seen them five or six times, got all the records and stuff. But they just, the coolest part to me is we got to see them on the smallest level and now they're doing all the shit they're doing and they keep growing as musicians, all four of them. It, they're just a fucking badass band. Yeah, I, I, I've seen them a handful of times as well. Um, it's funny you say that about the drummer because it, I, I, it's even though it's been a long time since I've seen you play, I just remember how 
flashy and badass you were. I mean, just keeping a perfect beat while your sticks are just, I don't even, you just, you're <laughs> awesome, man. You're really fun to watch. And, and oh, you, act, you he actually reminded me of you. And I went, oh, That's nice. Cause, cause I don't, I don't know too many drummers that are like that. You know, and I just remember going, he was bad. Yeah, he was, he's amazing. And I watched him uh, probably most of the time, you know, because he was just, just a show to watch. Oh, yeah. Um, he's, he's a show in, in and of himself. It's awesome. For sure. And then, you know, of course, with her and her, her vocals and guitar. Oh, players. God. And yeah, they're, that's just so, I, I'm in a weird way, and I know this is going to sound condescending. But you'll get it because I know you understand where I'm coming from. I'm so happy for that band and proud for that band because it's the same four original members. They never quit. They trudged through all the shit they've trudged through. And obviously Lizzie and, and RJ are brother and sister, so they've been together their own entire life. But still, they they refuse to give up early when they were being compared to this, that, and the other. And barf fucking barf and they've proved everybody wrong and it just makes me ecstatically happy well it's it's i've never met them any any of them and they seem like really good people too but a lot of times it, it, a little bit more credit to her because a lot of times they branch off the, the singer you know is, is as good looking as she is and as awesome of a musician and performer right they branch off and leave the band behind and go off and do yeah, Lizzie that's a Hale, fair point. Lizzie, you're right. The Lizzie Hale band. Yeah, you know, that's a fair like point. That. You're right. So, you know, give it, give her a little bit more props. Just, just keep them with, you know, obviously her brother and, and the rest of the guys, and they're just they're just keep on trucking. Yep. No, that's them, you're 100 percent right. Even, makes them even that much better. Oh yeah, a- absolutely, absolutely. I mean, well, all right. So, where can everybody find you? This is the fun part. <laughs> well, you get to plug all your shit, brother. <laughs> I'm all over Facebook. Let's let's Eric. Is it sucks? Is I, I, it's either your Facebook or your Instagram. Is Lance <laughs> Eric sucks? Well, Lance Eric sucks is my Instagram. That's correct. So okay, uh, Lance Eric somewhere on Facebook. You can find me. You can't. It's hard not to. Uh, it's hard to miss me. You um, are you are pretty. You're a pretty man. Oh, thanks. Anyway, um, you know, like I said, color chaos is just writing and and plugging it away and. You know, we're, we're, we got good things coming whenever this all clears up. Bang Tango, I'm sure we'll be doing something else in the future um, uh, after uh, after they get done playing Rockstar for a year. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> now, is then, the color is the first Color and Chaos record available on on streaming sites and stuff? It is. It's available okay. everywhere. iTunes. Um, it can be streamed everywhere. Um, okay, perfect, perfect. I'll and I'll. By the way, kids, you know, you guys know I'll put all that in the show notes. But um, yeah, make sure you check out all of Lance's stuff. What were you gonna say? I cut you off. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. That's just that you can get get that uh, colorchaos dot com. Our whole store is there. Okay, um, cool. We're actually extending um, our. Uh, you can get a if you're a truck driver, uh, you can get a um, the whole album downloaded for free. Oh, very um, cool. That's awesome. Kind of trying to do our part, you know. And, right. Uh, there's there's instructions on our website how to how to do it. If you're a truck driver, just uh, you can get that whole Hollywood album for free, and then you, know, you got some new tunes to listen to on your on your drives while you're taking care of everybody. So. Um, that's yeah, great. Look at you being a nice guy. Yeah. We got to. Got to. I feel like we got to do something. No, no, I know. I'm just busting your balls because I haven't seen you in a few years, and I want to bust your balls. <laughs> oh, good. Good, brother. So yeah, that's basically that, you know. And uh, we'll just see how uh, everything lays out. You know, we can get back out there and and play again. Uh, yeah, that's 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 what I'm going for. So I will put all of that stuff in the show notes where everybody can find you. There'll be links for everything. Um, before I let you go, is there anything that you did not? get off of your chest that you wanted to no i think uh if we talked more than i anticipated and i uh let some secrets go Ooh, is there anything i need to edit out <laughs> no whatever i said you could keep I'm, I'm not i'm not afraid i'm not afraid of that i'm not afraid of michael sweet <laughs> okay. you know what there's a 
in the in the wrestling world, there's there's people that will come up with wacky sayings and they'll they'll put them on T-shirts and they sell massively. You should totally put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how the go over. You should put "fuck Michael Sweet." <laughs> I'm not afraid of that guy. <laughs> I'm not afraid of him. I'm afraid of all of his followers. They're everywhere. Now, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Up. They could sneak up on me. Those are. There's some crazy people. <laughs> I've I've seen him go after some uh, Michael haters. So yeah, well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> stay clear. Stay clear of that. See, see how my guitar picks go over, and we'll we'll go from there. Yes, there is a guitar picks. Yeah, yeah but you you should totally check out in, into that T-shirt thing because that would be funny. Actually, you should put you should you should reverse it. You should put I'm not afraid of Michael Sweet, and on the back you should put fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just made you some money. Look at me. I'm trying to help you out, brother. I'm doing my part. <laughs> see how it goes. Yeah, we'll Good see idea. how it goes. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your yeah. busy day to to hang out with my dumbass and um, keep Always. keep uh, plugging away and uh, much success when this all is list- lifted and you guys can get back out there and play. Because um, yeah. and maybe you'll play somewhere where I can fucking see you. I don't know anywhere because I will be there because I need to go somewhere. Um, make sure you guys check out all of Lance's stuff so you can keep up with where he will be next, whether it's Bang Tango, Color of Chaos, or anything else he is doing. Um, and that is it. You got anything else to add, brother? Uh, just good luck to you too, man. I know it's tough and uh, all of us are struggling a little bit with the you know not being able to play. And so good luck to you as well. And, well, I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Keeping our fingers crossed for everybody. Yeah, we we are, and uh, you make sure the any of my guys that are truck drivers make sure you check out the the website. And like I said, I'll put it in the show notes. Lance, I appreciate your time, brother, and uh, right. we will talk soon, man. All right, man. Talk soon. Have a All good right. night. You too, brother. See you. Dick Kids, that's a show for the week. That little piece that we just heard is another Color of Chaos song called Fight. So I hope you guys dug the episode. I hope you got some good laughs out of it. Uh, at least got some good t-shirt ideas. Um, yeah, fuck that guy. And got to laugh at me not knowing geography, or at least knowing where Lance lives. But that is it. I am out of here. I'm going to keep this close kind of short because I've got stuff to do. And thankfully, my cats are asleep and they're not shitting in the box like they were last week. But do not forget to leave me a rating or a review. Five stars if you think I've earned it. If not, that's cool. Whatever. I don't like me either. I have to live with me. You guys don't. You can at least hit the stop button. But also, do not forget to call Trio Production House and book your rehearsal time because you guys know you need to have some rehearsals because hopefully we'll have some gigs coming soon so to reiterate that's right same podcast i said that word twice book a two-hour block 25 bucks an hour plus 25 dollar tech fee which is a guy that comes in there or girl could be not real sure who will help set you up and run your sound. Jake will give you the third hour for free. So that's a three-hour block. There you go. Get some rehearsal done. So give Jake a call or a text, 502-644-6705, or check out the Trio Production House Facebook page at facebook.com slash Trio Production House 502. That's it. I am out of here. And as I say, at the new normal wait, hold up. I ain't saying shit. Don't forget. 
don't forget to read the show notes because Lance has a lot of pages to check out. He's a busy dude. He was awesome to take his time, and I appreciate it. Now, the new normal. (gasps) Stay safe and shit. Yep, that's right. Stay safe and shit. Do your thing. Learn something. Go learn an instrument. Go practice your instrument. Call Trio. Put some rehearsal time. Look up Lance's stuff. Check out all his bands, all his music, all the stuff he's got going on. And that is it. I am out of here. I am done talking. Goodbye. So until next time, I will talk at you soon.